Wow, what a great video you are watching right now. Wouldn't it be better if it had John Cena, pregnant woman, and text that said, Are you on your period or something? If that was an advertisement for a mobile game, I could probably expect to rake in millions of dollars. But unfortunately, I don't have a product to sell yet. Good evening, I'm Bagubuns, and I've seen my fair share of poorly produced and cringy ads, but I don't think there's an industry so consistently bad at doing it than mobile games. And that's probably for a reason. Wow, this guy sure does suck at this simple game. You have a brain in your skull, right? Give us money. If you play this, you could be legally skilled. You don't know what that means? I don't know what that means. That's how mafia works? Buy our microtransactions. You've probably seen these around, and if you say you haven't, you're lying. Everybody with the phone has a run-in with the cringy ad because at least one of the apps or websites you use will play these guaranteed. guaranteed. YouTube even has them all over the place. You're not allowed to say the word sex on YouTube, but let's let our advertisers get away with pornography. If you have never run into this monstrosity at all, keep it that way. Let me tell you, I hate them, I know you all hate them, but we still see them because they somehow work. Sometimes they're really funny, but only because they're so stupid, not because they have good jokes. They can look really ugly at times, and even though the people making these ads are lying pieces of garbage, they can also be crowned as marketing geniuses. Ad networks spread these things around like a virus. They're often really simple and satisfying, and sometimes even objectify women, which alright, that's a quality that I'm sure is popular across all demographics. Graphics. Even though these look like somebody's first week of Blender, they use eye-catching colors and potent imagery. These ads don't even have to look like a fever dream to be bad. Not everybody could afford millions of dollars with fancy visuals and Pedro Pascal, but if you can, then you can. The actual game looks cheap as hell. All the money went to the ads. If you take one thing away from this video, it's that you are not their customer. You are easy prey. Mobile ads could come in all shapes and sizes, and most importantly, budgets. And most of the time, the actual game that they advertise just ends up being a simple puzzle game or something. Super lame. Super boring. Like, at least when Honey Pop does it, you get hands up. <clears throat> Look, I get it. Sometimes you need to lie to advertise, and you need to advertise to make money. And I do like me some money. But there's a difference between exaggerating the scope of your product and fraud. Did you know fraud is illegal? Shocking, I know. But they still get away with it, either because nobody does anything, or the company is doing the bare minimum to make this depiction a reality. The most legal action I've ever seen being taken against misleading game ads is in a case against an actual gambling casino game, because duh. And there was also that one time when the pull the pin ads were banned. You know the ones, you've seen them, and still might be seeing them, because the ban only really happened in the UK. Granted, it is significantly harder to get money from just interacting with the ad, right? Like, there've gotta be people actually playing these games and paying for the microtransactions. And that's cool and all if you want to keep playing another version of Match the Shapes. But if you dropped 50 bucks on it, that's not a scam, that's just you. You should get that checked out, reckless spending isn't healthy. So in terms of misleading advertising and scams, there are bigger fish to fry, right? So since there's very little perceived risk in these goofy little ads, what's the risk in letting it run loose while the big boys deal with the big stuff, right? Well, if you keep thinking that way, people are going to get hurt, and people already are getting hurt. This goes a lot further than just cringe damage. If the government doesn't want to do anything about stealing property and scamming customers, then the best we could do is spread awareness. If you hate these ads as much as I do, then subscribe to the channel. Maybe we could revolt or something. This segment's gonna permanently ruin my search history. Hey, are you horny? Are you not getting matches on Tinder? Do you have erectile dysfunction? We could cure two of those things. Hi, I'm Dr. Downbad, and guess what our mobile game has? It has women! You never seen one of those before! Okay, how do I say this? There are a lot of men that play video games, and a majority of men like lady parts. I smell a business opportunity. Honestly, I don't even know if I could be that mad at this one. Like, it's not good on so many levels. I personally don't condone it. But also, this is very valid as a marketing strategy. If you are on YouTube in the late 2000s to early 2010s, that was a major form of exposure for some content creators. Smosh thumbnails used to look like, whoa, and whoa, 22 million views, 40 million views, 44 million views. Wow, 
If I put a juicy booty in the thumbnail, I could get a bajillion views. This isn't even a YouTube thing. You could trace this marketing strategy back to pinups from World War One. I'm ready to die for this lady. I mean, my country. Uh. We have been lying to people in the exact same way for over a century. Do you know why? Because people fall for this. But just as it is in the real world, you still won't get any ladies. Hey, am I right fellas or am I right fellas? Are you interested in those bikini clad girls on the side? Well, guess what? This is a game about snails. And while snails are sexier than women, they still lie to us. It just sort of peeves me how many ads you see that are like, don't tell your wife about this game, or this game is only for mature audiences. I don't even know what Raid Shadow Legends is supposed to be anymore. A game that you wouldn't want to get caught playing, apparently. It's funny because this game is the king of not letting you do anything. And since mobile games usually, hopefully, use fictional women instead of real women, they go very overboard with their portrayal of women, and they do it in ways that are much less proportional. This is a real game ad. I would sure hope that something like this was fake to stir controversy or attract attention or something, but they actually developed a game where the main goal is to sexually whack the living hell out of as many women as you can. This game has been up for a while, and I hope everybody sleeps well tonight knowing that neither the Google Play Store nor the Apple App Store has any problem not banning what is essentially Sexual Assault Simulator. To be fair, not all mobile games are necessarily lying to you in this regard. Goddess of Victory Nikkei is a game that uses extremely provocative advertising tactics. But that's because the game itself is actually extremely sexualized. At first, I was actually really skeptical of this game because of the marketing, but I gave it a download and a playthrough, and it's actually really good. Super fast-paced, engaging combat, memorable character designs, an alright story, but also some tasteless fan service. So yeah, it's not bad for a suggestively advertised mobile game. Except this game is not exclusive to mobile. All this footage you're watching is on my PC, so it's it's really hard to fully count this as a mobile game ad win. Let me be clear, it's very sexist. Women aren't portrayed in a very respectful or appropriate way. But let's be honest, it ain't stopping anytime soon. I know there's an underlying issue of the male gaze, but that's not what this video is about. It's about how honestly they market their product. Yeah, not very well. If aliens came to Earth and the first thing they saw were mobile game ads, the Earth would no longer exist. And honestly, I don't blame them. A majority of these ads are considered cringy because it feels like something that was pitched at a board meeting where everybody was coked out of their minds. It's a category of ads that just don't make sense. It's so hard to describe. I'm losing brain cells just thinking about it. These types of ads fall into two categories. Rage bait and bro, what do you mean? Both of these ads either don't give you enough information about the game, or give you too much information that doesn't coherently fit together. The only goal of these ads is to get you to go, I wonder what the heck that was, and then profit I guess. Tons of ads present you with a basic game mechanic. Big number equals big power. Pull the pins in the right order to make the little fella not die. Spell simple words with the letters you're given. These things could be solved by little kids, because you don't need any skills other than passing the first grade. The guys in the ad couldn't even do that. They just fail at these absolutely trivial tasks. And the goal is to get you to rage click on that game and show the guy in the ads who's boss. Let me ask you this, do you people actually do that? Do you actually see an ad of some idiot struggling with a basic puzzle, and you get so mad that you drop everything you're doing to show how smart you are? Does that make you feel intelligent? because it makes me feel like a genius. Mobile game ads are often confusing because they use content that has nothing to do with the game being promoted. Mobile game ads have started to also do that horrible thing where they try to make their ads a scavenger hunt for lore to gain more traction and build interest in their game. And I know of a certain YouTuber that just can't resist this type of stuff. I think his name is Pat Matt or something like that. The goal of these ads is to generate buzz and get people talking even though you know that none of this actually represents the final game. And don't even get me started on some of those captions. 
please choose gender, heterosexuality, or homosexuality. Is it gay to be a guy? I tried 3,333 times and still can't win the US. Well, I think politicians should know what America looks like before running. Only people with an IQ of 180 can find all differences on the 98th level. I know that's not my Shrek. I guess that means I have a high IQ. She is a fake pregnant. How did you get past the TSA with that crossbow? It's 12.30 a.m. I don't want to read this. Clearly, somebody needs some help. And an English class? And you'd think that companies would stop blowing their advertising budget on something like this, right? There's no way that anybody in the right mind would be hooked on something as disgusting as this, right? But the fact that they're still doing it means that it somehow works. Who is giving these people money to keep doing this? Like, genuinely. If you have, please comment below. I'm not mad at you. I'm just a little curious. Doing ads this way is often cheaper as well, because they don't have to fork over a ton of money for good looking CGI, and they don't have to put in a lot of resources to make it look bad. Any publicity is good publicity if you don't value your reputation. I feel sick now. I'm going to wash my hands. You know, gamers developed a term for this situation. It's called bullshot. No, not the vodka kind. Never mind. I don't know how many of you watch E3 press conferences, if they're actually happening that year. Actually, I don't myself. I just watch Scott the Waz or Donkey reacting to them. But the point is, video games are teased over there, and to get a consumer's attention, they show this absolutely gorgeous shot of the game, promising that this is what the gameplay is like. <laughs> I mean, the final product isn't making my eyes bleed or anything, but we got a taste of something truly exquisite. A shot of gameplay that opened the window to my soul! This is a downgrade. But a ton of mobile ads are also pumped with so much thought and care just to hook the players in. Even the AAA guys aren't above it. They dish out beautiful visuals, they roll out celebrities, and they make sure they touch every single YouTuber alive. But oh snap, we ran out of money for actual game. Let's just wing it and put a bunch of microtransactions everywhere. This is why I have trust issues. Mobile games can't just use clear and accurate representations of a game's actual gameplay and features because then nobody would want to play their game. Mobile games don't really have any strengths of their own, so the only way to compete is to overblow everything. And damn, these ads are really good. The glowing praise, the action shots, the framing, everything about this actually gets you hyped up. But where is the real gameplay footage? It's either hidden away at the end or just faked entirely. It's not even like the actual games are unplayable. It's just that it doesn't even come close to what we see in the ads, which frustrates me. It's literally like they catfished you with a Snapchat filter or something. Here's the expectation. Here's the reality. How about another one? Oh, wow. Okay, now this is what the game actually looks like. Pretty boring, right? Oh, this one looks really cool. Aha, uh -huh, you got me again, you're so sneaky. Mobile game ads aren't meant to be seen by intelligent people. They're meant to be seen by idiots. And children are idiots. Don't boo me, I'm not wrong. Children don't have the experience or maturity to critically evaluate marketing messages. Little kids are ignorant, stupid, and don't have good judgment, especially in this day and age, where they consider stuff like this peak content. Sticking at your yacht for the rizzle. I smell a money making opportunity. Kids are more susceptible to advertising tactics since they often have difficulty distinguishing between a gross predatory ad and a funny game. If I was a kid and I saw, if you score 400, you could go to Disneyland. I wouldn't know any better. Sounds pretty sick to me. I never been to Disneyland. Not so fast though. They don't really have Disneyland tickets. They just used a special advertising tactic called lies and deception. It works so well that it's basically illegal. As an informed and experienced user of the internet, it can be pretty easy to see these for what they really are. But to a vulnerable child, they could be manipulated into downloading a greedy sack of lies. 
You can successfully sell anything to a child with the right amount of urgency, desirability, and peer pressure. That's why so many ads are just blasted with colors, filled with dramatic characters, and dumbed down. They want kids to play their game, which can't be beneficial to the children's health or well-being. Just think about what these seemingly harmless things can actually do. Many of these ads freely promote and often glamorize hypersexuality, abuse, crimes, drugs, etc. None of these things should be in front of a child. Marketing to kids is some serious stuff. It's all about taking advantage of their trust and exploiting their innocence and inability to make informed choices. Children are constantly being shoved into this world of materialism and consumer culture. It's really hard to strike a balance between protecting children from harmful advertising practices and respecting the rights of businesses to promote their products. But in the end, the children should take priority because they are our future. You're so skibbity. Humanity is so screwed. There are plenty of game companies that don't think that their horrible video game ideas can stand on their own two feet. And they're not wrong. So they steal somebody else's better idea without their permission. Oh wow, what an original character. No, it's clearly the Joker from the Batman franchise. It'd be one thing if it were just a creepy clown. But the specific way the makeup's done, the haircut, clothing, and mannerisms are all quite unique to the Joker. And I think you know exactly who isn't in the game. Batman! Batman isn't in this game. Or any other characters from that universe for that matter. Now this is quite a high budget looking advertisement, so you could argue that maybe DC licensed it out to them. But from a company as protective of their IPs as DC, come on, these guys clearly copy DC's homework. If they actually got the licenses to it, they wouldn't try to hide it. Trademark infringement is probably advertisers most frequently violated law. They stole Among Us, they stole Pixar, they even stole Mr. Beast. I mean, legally it falls under misappropriation of likeness, but that's basically just trademark infringement for human beings. It's pretty obvious to me that these types of ads are using bootleg versions of famous characters. But I think that this could still cause a lot of consumer confusion, especially to the kids that they target. The idea of using these knockoff characters to promote a low effort game also sucks for the originals, since it basically ruins the brand's image. And sometimes, these characters and IPs are put in a number of unflattering situations. And it's not like a company could just go around handing out cease and desist letters to everybody who violates it, unless you're Nintendo and you have big balls, a big wallet, and an army of hitmen. The point is, if you poured countless hours making something original and somebody else is profiting from it for free, I'm sure you would be pissed. You should be pissed. I would sue them on the spot. But you want to know what's even crappier than stealing somebody's idea and making a profit? No, this isn't the same thing as trademark infringement. Let me explain. Trademark infringement is taking the Joker character and putting it into your crappy mobile game ad. You know, just a crazy example since surely nobody would stoop so low. Copyright infringement is if you take a scene from the movie and say, that's mine. I made that. Joker 2019 is owned by Warner Brothers Pictures, Village Roadshow Pictures, Broad Creative, and DC Comics, and the former was a parody and an example of what not to do. I am in no way trying to imply that I made this film and this is for entertainment purposes only. Please support the official release. That's what a lot of mobile games do though. These people once again find ways to steal somebody else's work and promote their crappy mobile game from it. But it's not like these guys were using movie scenes like in my example. I'm sure they would get struck out of the sky before that idea even crosses their mind. So oftentimes, the advertisers would steal footage from another game to try and pass it off as their own. Wow, this game looks pretty neat. Are you telling me that this is a no download browser game? That sounds too good to be true. Yup, the game actually sucks. It was an ad for a real game project called Project Awaken, which did not allow this lame excuse of a company to just rip their entire demo from their website and promote it as their own. And that's only scratching the surface. Forget stealing from bigger studios with budgets. Why not steal clips or sometimes full videos from poor little content creators? This ad was actually an animation from the YouTube channel Blue Monkey. This wasn't promoted by Blue Monkey and they sure as hell didn't give permission for the guy to just rip a scene from their hard work. Here's another that stole an animation from Level Up. These are 
relatively high profile animation channels with millions of subscribers, which sucks because animation is tough. Imagine spending dozens of hours pouring your heart and soul into a project for some talentless loser to take credit for it and sell something with it. It's already bad enough to steal somebody's hard work and call it your own, but then you attach it to a garbage product that makes money on behalf of the original animators. You don't even really need any thought or budget for this. Just copy somebody else's homework. Nobody's there to stop you. It's such a shame that something with actual artistic integrity is associated with a lazy cash grab. There's absolutely zero excuse for doing something like this. It's really shameful to be doing this as a company that may or may not pay taxes. There's a reason why it's considered an illegal advertising practice in most places. But the fact that the most we could do is complain about it because the higher ups consider matters like this trivial is infuriating. Protecting consumers is important. It seems obvious, but there are people who need to hear that. In the meantime though, I think it's important for people to not fall into these sorts of traps and look for honestly made games by being able to identify an honestly made ad. First of all, it should have a decent amount of real gameplay footage. This is important. Big AAA companies make this mistake and basically scam consumers out of 60 plus bucks. You can have your high budget CGI visual spectacle, but I want to see what your product is about. And I'm not just talking about the last three seconds of an ad in a little window no raid shadow legends it has to be sizable advertisements shouldn't have any mystery around what a product is that's how they end up taking your money and giving you something worthless it shouldn't make obviously outlandish promises and you know the ones this is mobile game of the year this is the most beautiful game ever this is better than anything that you find on consoles even the best mobile games will never be as good as some random mid-tier pc or console games but that's okay make a good playable mobile game nobody's expecting a playable masterpiece in their pocket finally look for something well made and professional it shouldn't have to have white text spouting nonsense or a floating JPEG of a hand trying to explain something obvious to you. It should look and feel professional and be captivating without being gross. It also shouldn't be begging you to play the game. Show, don't tell. I'd love to see the mobile gaming ecosystem clean up its act a little bit, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So we can only give tips to consumers to stop them from falling into these traps. I'm not saying that these dumb advertisements are more harmful than scammers trying to get grandma's bank info, but the lack of action taken against them encourages game studios to steal other people's hard work and create degenerative and explicit material. That still hurts people, and hurting people is not good. I'm turning my ad blocker back on. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. <laughs>